As you may or may not know, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, or TCJA, that was enacted in 2018 during the Trump administration is set to expire at the end of 2025. So at the beginning of 2026, if Congress does not do anything, the tax rates are going to automatically go higher because of the TCJA sunset. Hey everybody, I'm Tim Dorman, founder of Equal Ridge Wealth Advisors, and today I'm going to discuss the tax implications of a TCJA sunset. Keep in mind, currently, income tax rates are at historically low levels, at least as low as they've been in about 100 years or so. Right, so first, the main question, right? Are your taxes going to increase in 2026? Well, most people saw some form of tax cut in 2018 with the implementation of the TCJA, and it eliminated a lot of deductions and personal exemptions for like your children and stuff like that, but it also lowered the marginal tax rate. So even though your taxable income may have increased, the overall taxes that you paid probably went down. So if your situation has remained the same, you might see an increase in your taxes starting in 2026 when the TCJA sunsets. But if your situation has changed between 2018 and 2026, like maybe you retired during that time or maybe your income or your job changed, well, it's gonna be a little harder to compare. But all things being equal, the people who saw cuts in 2018, which is the majority of us, are likely gonna see increases in 2026, which of course, like I just said, is gonna be the majority of people. Now next, will Congress allow the TCJA to expire? Well, it's Congress, so who knows, right? But in general, nobody really expects all of the provisions of the TCJA to be allowed to expire, but also, no one really expects any changes to be made in 2024 with it being an election year. And of course, historically, it's pretty common for Congress to approve tax changes in December, and then they go into effect the following January 1st. And of course, sometimes those uh, changes don't really happen until they actually get into the new year, and then they make them retroactive to the beginning of that year, which of course really makes it easy for tax preparers and tax planning advisors. I'm kidding. Of course, that's not true, but we do always learn and adapt to what the government eventually does do. And we also know that no one wants to be the party in charge when tax increases go into effect. So we can likely expect some kind of compromise starting in 2026. The current administration has already made proposals that any household making less than $400,000 is not going to see an increase in taxes but like I said, we'll have to wait and see what happens. This is why we like to take advantage of what we can control today as opposed to a roll of the dice in the future. All right, now, who might benefit from the TCJA expiring? Well, any taxpayer who normally has large itemized deductions could benefit when and if those deductions are no longer reduced. These itemized deductions could include large state taxes, property tax deductions, and or advisor fees. But at the same time, the Alternative Minimum Tax, or AMT, would likely come back into play. And what the heck does that mean, you ask? Well, the Alternative Minimum Tax, or AMT, is a separate tax system that requires taxpayers to calculate their tax liability twice. First, they have to determine it under the Ordinary Income Tax Rules, and then under the separate AMT rules, and pay whichever amount is higher. Now, the AMT has fewer preferences, and different exemptions and tax rates than the ordinary system. And one of the provisions of the AMT was that the state and property taxes were not deductible. So not everyone would benefit from removing those caps on certain itemized deductions. Clear as mud, right? The joys of our tax code. Who would be negatively affected by the TCJA expiring? Well, any taxpayers who are currently relying on the large standard deduction and would not normally have enough deductions to itemize. They're gonna suffer the most when that standard deduction is cut roughly in half. So of course this will affect 85 to 90% of filers because this is about how many are currently using the historically large standard deductions. And don't forget about estate taxes. They are also expected to increase. The TCJA basically doubled the exemption amount that could be passed on to non-spouse heirs without paying estate taxes. So for 2024, the exemption is over $13.6 million for individuals and over $27 million for couples. So it's pretty large right now. 
And if that is allowed to expire and the exemptions are cut in half, a lot more people are going to be subject to estate taxes if they don't do some planning now. So bottom line, what should you do right now? Even though we don't know what's gonna happen, there are certain things that we can do to prepare right now. Now, those with very large net worths who are over the estate exemption rates right now and that are always going to be affected by estate taxes, and of course, those that might end up over future estate tax exemption thresholds should definitely be doing some planning now to reduce their potential estate tax liability down the road. Because when do we wanna pay taxes? When they're the cheapest, right? Or when they're the lowest. As for income taxes, most people don't have a lot of control over their income. But business owners and, of course, retirees in their gap years may be able to increase their taxable income in 2024 and 2025 to have less taxable income starting in 2026. And we definitely want to take advantage of the historically low rates right now. In 2026, if rates do go higher, we will likely be using more tools like bunching or lumping of deductions and other items like that in order to prevent potentially higher taxes at that time. At Eagle Ridge Wealth Advisors, we recommend filling lower income brackets right now with Roth IRA conversions while income tax rates are at historically low levels to ensure that we are lowering lifetime tax liabilities. Because while we want to pay Uncle Sam every cent that we owe, we don't ever want to leave him a tip. Be sure to check out my video on Roth conversions and thank you for tuning in. Once again, Tim Dorman here founder of Eagle Ridge Wealth Advisors. And if you would like to see how we help our clients get the most out of their financial lives and retirement, please visit us at erwealth.com and we hope to see you there.